Welcome back Trinidad and Tobago. Well, Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA Director Alan Stewart joins us via Skype to discuss with us the measures being put in place for the upcoming hurricane season. Good morning and welcome, Mr. Stewart. Good morning, Madonna. It's a pleasure having you. I can't remember when was the last time we, we spoke to you. I guess it was yes, just in the aftermath of Brett, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. How have you been? Pretty well indeed. Uh, we are uh, enjoying whatever <laughs> prosperity exists out there. <laughs> and whatever downtime we have before the hurricane right. season approaches. Mm -hmm. So my first question, based on your information, can you confirm that this year is expected to be one of the worst or most dangerous as it relates to severe weather patterns here at home and even globally? While there's a strong possibility, um, the scientific community as relates for... Uh, for this type of notification have not indicated that it can be the, the worst. What we have experienced is that this may be the norms going forward due to climate change as it relates to hydrometeorological uh, threats. And therefore, it's important that um, the region have a different posture as to how we prepare for these type of um, incidents, these types of um, threats to our way of life. It means, therefore, we have to now look very critically at our, our service improvement plans. We have to look critically as our public investment system as it relates to risk management. Now, we would have spoken a little bit jokingly about downtime, but I know you all don't really have downtime. Uh, the no, hurricane no, no, season no. begins in a, in a few months. What sort of preparations are taking place now uh, at this time? One of the, there are several areas that we are working with. One, you have to look at the billing capacity, maintaining what you have, and making the necessary adjustments where it, it, it becomes necessary. For example, we would have seen that the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service have effectively rolled out their uh, CAP program, which is the Common Alerting Protocol. It means, therefore, we have to now sensitize the community as to how to receive these alerts understanding that these standard setting protocols are vast improvements in the way in which they do business. So that is one way of uh, communicating with the public and making them understand exactly how risk warnings and alerts and emergency messages will be transmitted to them. Um, further to that, it's important that we look at our social vulnerability index. This is an area that we have to focus on because we recognize that um, in the whole scheme of things, where you have persons that are vulnerable, you now have to do the taxonomy and see where they are. For example, the elderly, um, the special needs in our community, those that are on the, at, a, at a level that you can consider to be at, at highest risk. And so we continue to work with the community meet with a number of village villages, village councils, to discuss this whole idea of community emergency planning. How do you plan effectively? Now, on the flip side of that, we continue to work with our stakeholders, ensuring that they do the necessaries, ensuring that the necessary partnership exists, that we can function together to bring quick relief to persons who might be impacted. Another important area is that of mitigation. Understanding that we can do so much to reduce the impact of these hazards as they may occur. Uh, and therefore, we, we are doing work in that area. One of the strong areas is that of exercising. Exercising, simulation exercises, allow us to be able to uh, practice, identify gaps, validates our plan and we are involved in a number of exercises. Uh, soon we'll be doing some exercises with the airport authority. As you know, the fuse uh, response 18 is on, which we there is a, a rule for the disaster management system. It allows us to look at um, crisis management from a very broad area where we are look at, at all of the players that may be involved if something catastrophic uh, made to happen to Trinidad and Tobago, and whereby we need to seek assistance of external uh, partners to come on board to help us. Those protocols have to be clear. But not only having the protocols, but well exercised 
so the procedures can be smooth going forward. Now, when you spoke about simulation exercises. How often should these exercises be conducted? Um, simulation exercises must be done at least at least once a year. But for us, we are based on our um, where we are placed as an organization. We have been involved in uh, several exercises throughout the year. Okay. Now, I would I like to talk about awareness and educational drives. Are they ongoing at this time to ensure, for instance, that the population is well informed about safety mechanisms? For instance, I'll give you an example. Just, uh, I think it was this week, <coughs> earlier this week, we had uh, someone from the Red Cross Society of Trinidad and Tobago, and they were talking yes. about some programs, for instance, uh, shelter management, first aid training. How important are these? I think these, these are very important. One of the things that we must realize is that we have a very transient society mean that people keep moving on. So training and exercising have to be continuous. Um, it builds, it gives, it gives the opportunity for building capacity and building competency. Um, it allows for persons to be able to validate their plans. Um, where there are gaps, you're able to identify those gaps. So that that element of the disaster management system is one of the areas that we'll consider to be an imperative. Now, have there also been any campaigns at schools, for instance, to teach the younger ones about safety during or even after a natural disaster? Yes, and, and this is where I, I give me, I could take a, let me make a little plug here for uh, maybe Jadicel. We have partnered, you, you may have heard about um, the ARISE program, which is the partnership between public and private sector. We have been doing some partnership in that we have gone into some of the schools and been able to look at some of the differently abled persons uh, as to our students as to how they can improve on their emergency plans, how they can improve going forward and building resiliency within the school system. For example, things like the evacuation plan. Um, during the month of, of March, um, we would have been heavily involved in what you consider to be a National Emergency Exercise Day. This, this exercise program allowed us to be able to work with some of our schools, um, having them exercise their evacuation plan um, to the extent where they become comfortable with these procedures, especially those that are, are well exposed, like in the low-lying areas, um, shoreline community. Um, the, it's important for them to know, know how, where their muster points are, know what's the procedures, uh, and become comfortable with these um, SOPs, standard operating proce procedures. I think last time we spoke, you mentioned, was it the TEMA's virtual vision app? That's correct. How is that functioning at this time? The virtual vision app becomes one of those um, tools in the toolbox that allow the public to do crowdsourcing. It allows also us to be able to communicate with the public effectively, meaning therefore um, because this app comes with push notification, we are able to push emergency messages directly to uh, persons in the various parts of the community. Um, this has been going along well. It's also augmented by another app that is called Zello. This has been working well in the community, and we want to continue to encourage persons out there, wherever you may be, in Trinidad and Tobago. Download these two apps. There's also the ODPM has an app which gives you um, information on procedures and on threats and hazards in a particular way. And therefore, we encourage persons to arm themselves with these tools that they can better uh, pre be prepared they will be for any eventuality. Great. So as you talk about arming ourselves with the various tools, what should we be doing now? Is it too soon to begin to collect canned items, for instance? What should we be doing? Based on the threats, we live in a very, we live in a seismic community. So it means, therefore, while we are thinking about the hurricane season, an event can happen at any time. It's important that we look clinically at our family emergency plans. Our family emergency plan will look to areas of uh, protection of your assets, things that you have, um, things that you may consider to be critically important to you. For example, documents, 
Um, another area is the area of looking at how you um, establish an emergency kit for your home. You will want to make sure that the critical things such as emergency supplies are well stocked. To wait until the night moment to acquire these items may not always be the best thing. Funding will just not afford you to do so. So we want to encourage the general public to start looking at emergency supplies and also looking at equipment that you may need for in the event that you are impacted. Invest in things like a tarpaulin for your roof. Invest in things like um, tools that will allow you to, to be able to recover quickly. First aid kits. These are essentials going forward to make part of your emergency supply. And I think the Red Cross would have done an excellent yes. job um, explaining that to, to persons. But I, I want to emphasize that you need to do that now. Start putting these things in, in when you go to the grocery. You pick out items that you think that are important to building capacity within your own home, taking care of yourself for 72 hours. And also, those, so there are two kits. You're talking about the emergency kit and the first aid kit. Well, it is part of the is part of the whole. Meaning, therefore, your emergency kit should, uh, your first aid kit should be part of that kit as well. Okay. Um, you have tools, you have um, equipment, special things, um, food stuff. So it's divided into various areas. Great. Always a pleasure chatting with you, Mr. Stewart, and we definitely look forward to some more conversations on topics such as these as time progresses.